Well, it has come as a bit of a shock, I imagine, to a lot of people. The news this morning that Spark Sport is basically folding its tent. Uh, they haven't been able to make it pay. There's been a big loss that they've incurred in trying to get Spark Sport up and make it competitive. And so the first casualty, and I use that with perhaps inverted commas, is cricket. And, well, people like me are going to save $24.99 a month now because we won't have to pay to watch the cricket. Instead, it appears to be going all to TVNZ. But with me now is the CEO of New Zealand Cricket to clarify exactly what's taken place and where the cricket is going, David White. Uh, David, a very good afternoon to you. So explain uh, how much cricket is all the cricket that was scheduled for Spark Sport this summer now going to TVNZ in some shape or form. Afternoon, Brendan. Uh, Yes, as of uh, 1 July next year, all cricket, around 100 matches a year, uh, will be shown on free to air, on uh, live and live and free on their on their networks. So um, it's it's a it's a massive result for New Zealand cricket. It's an incredible opportunity for us to promote the game and the eyeballs uh, that it brings to um, to cricket is just fantastic. Yes, I mean, normally, I suppose, when you get a phone call from uh, your main broadcaster to tell them that they're basically going out of business because they can't make it pay, it would be shock, horror, probe stuff, but uh, in a curious kind of way, without wishing to, uh, I suppose, uh, make too much of the downfall of Spark Sport, that uh, there will be a big increase, won't there? A massive increase, I would imagine, in the number of people in New Zealand who will be able to watch cricket on some of the summer. No, that's right. And, and Brendan, if you don't mind, I just... Uh just to take this opportunity just to acknowledge Spark Sport. Um, they've, been, they've, they've been terrific. It's, you know, they're they've new to the market. Um, they brought innovation in terms of technology. They uh, broadcast a lot more cricket than we previously broadcast as well. So, and they, they brought competition to the market, uh, which I think the, the sports rights market, uh, unfortunately, it hasn't worked out for them. So that's, um, that's sad. But as a result of that, like you said, we've got a great opportunity to really grow the game of cricket in New Zealand. So who initiated the TVNZ involvement in uh, this situation? Did you approach them? Did they approach you? How did TVNZ get involved in getting all of this cricket? Well, we're, we've already partners, if you remember. So under the current arrangement, um, we had a we had um, the deal with Spark and also we had a free-to-air component with TVNZ. So 60% of the Super Smash matches currently are on TV1 or Duke, and uh, the T20 of first T20 of the White Ferns or Black Caps on every tour was on TV TV1. So it was just a natural extension to the deal, and that was um, and that was a deal that was done between Spark and TVNZ, and we've come into it late in the piece. So was TVNZ having to pay for this extra cricket they're getting this summer? That's an, uh, an agreement between TVNZ and Spark. What was what I can say is our financial model and, and the contract uh, remains unchanged. So you haven't lost any money on this deal? No, we get exactly the same amount of money and the same um, production quality. Uh, Whisper, the company that does the production, that they remain and, and we're, we're pleased about that. What about the commentating team? Will it be the same that was on Spark or will TVNZ be hiring their own commentators? I'm not sure if they'll not work through that and we'll work through that with them um, over the next six months because, of course, we continue through the summer um, as, as we are with, with the combination of Spark Sport and TVNZ. But that's something that'll be worked through over the next six to 12 months. What about the internationals that are coming this way over the summer? And I'm, I can't think of all of the countries that are coming here, but I imagine there's at least two or three. I know, I think England are coming here at some stage. Where will the uh, uh, T20 internationals and the ODIs and the test matches, will they be on TV1 or will they be on Duke or TVNZ Plus? No, no, the deal doesn't take effect until the 1st of uh, July next year. So, oh, so okay. for the rest of the season, it's just the same, same arrangement. So that's a combination of Spark and TVNZ. And the, the new arrangement... Um, takes an, an effect from the 1st of uh, July next year. So so I'd better not, I'd, I'd better not cancel my spark. Don't, spark. <laughs> don't cancel yourself oh, yet. Oh, yeah. I'm glad you, told, <laughs> glad you told me that, actually, because I was thinking, oh, he's got 25 bucks a month I've got to spend on something. But, oh, OK, so it doesn't take effect until when, the 1st of July? Yeah, 2023, yes, mm. that's right. Well, it's been quite a week for New Zealand cricket, isn't it, with the news of Kane Williamson? 
uh, and Tim Southey swapping roles to some degree. Were you involved at all in any of those discussions? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, it's big. You know, it's a big decision for New Zealand cricket, and such as the importance of the captaincy role. That you know, it goes up to board level as well. So yes, I was intimately involved in it. The reaction that I've had here yesterday, talking to a few ex. Uh, Black Caps was a little bit of surprise, uh, not so much that Kane has uh, pulled the reins back a bit to give himself a bit more time and, and a bit more uh, spare time, I suppose, but the feeling seemed to be that he would probably drop T20 or ODIs and just put his eggs mainly in Test match cricket. But that's not what's happened, is it? No, that's um, you know that that was his his bizarre thing was to. Um I think the I think the thing that was quite a motivation for Kane is um, next year we've got the Cricket World Cup in 2023 in, in India uh, and also then in 2024 we've got another T20 World Cup in combination of the West Indies and the USA and I think that's a real motivation for Kane as well. So, um, but in saying that, um, you know I think the the workload around the you know Test cricket is quite demanding and we're just pleased that, that Kane is um, absolutely committed to New Zealand cricket for all three formats. That, that's been our absolutely pro- absolute priority. The other surprise, I guess, David, was that the captaincy was given to Southey rather than uh, Tom Latham, who had captained the um, New Zealand team, I think, in nine Test matches uh, over the last couple of years when Williamson was out, problems with his elbows, saw him sidelined. Uh, but in the end of these selectors, I guess Gary Stead decided to give it to Tom Latham. Uh, how did Latham take that news? Oh, Tom's an absolute professional. Um, you know, we've got a strong leadership group within the, the Black Caps. He's a key part of that. He's still going to captain New Zealand a lot uh, over the next few years. Um, short form cricket, and he, he is the vice captain. Um, so he, he's a professional. He'll absolutely get behind Tim. And uh, I think the um, thinking was, you know, from Carrie's thoughts were to just to, to change it, uh, almost from a bowler's perspective, just change things up a little bit and um, freshen it up. So that that was his point of view. Do you hope that um, New Zealand cricket, particularly at Test match level, <laughs> follows uh, the pattern set by Brenda McCullum and Ben Stokes with the English team in the last couple of months, or is that not part of the DNA of New Zealand cricket? I think that um, I think that you know we'll play our own style, and we've been very successful over a you know, number of years now with our own style of Test cricket and winning the Test match championship. But I think it's fair to say, Brenda, that, that there is a change the way uh, the Test match cricket is played, the the tempo, um, and I think that's probably been brought around by T20. A lot of T20 leagues, uh, batters are a lot more aggressive, bowlers are more aggressive, um, and the mindset has certainly changed a bit. So. Um, will it change the way we play? I'm, I'm not sure, but I, I think I think the way that cricket, uh, Test cricket, is being played, it has changed. Yes, maybe that... not to the extreme of of England. Yeah, I was going to say, David. Yeah, things have changed a lot since the days of Jeff Boycott and David White. You know, just <laughs> pa- patting the ball back all day. You know, and 157 for two at stumps or something. But um... I know that. that... Yeah. 157 was a big day. Um, <laughs> yeah, but uh, no, the game certainly changed. Um, Definitely. It's, it's, it's exciting for cricket. Mm. Anyway, David, I thank you very much indeed for your time today. And um, I'm pleased that you're happy with this r- arrangement because it means we'll continue to see plenty of cricket on New Zealand television. Yeah, I suppose it's a bit of an issue. I think you touched on a uh, lack of competition for Sky, but um, maybe there's an opportunity for the free-to-air channels to step up a bit more and be a little more competitive in uh, competing with uh, pay TV. And that's what TVNZ appears to have done. So I thank you for your time and uh, you have a good day. Thank you, Brendan.